turn to hymn number 185. Hymn number 185. Let's stand and sing together. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where my cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. isn't it? I like that thought, glory to his name, don't you? What a blessing that is. And, uh, appreciate you in the Lord. We're just trust in the Lord to help us today. And uh, we'll take some prayer requests. Let's always desire your prayers. And we'll mention Preacher Chris is preaching at Christian home today. So let's pray for him there as he's preaching there in uh, that service. And uh, a lot of needs of prayer. I'll mention this right off Appreciate your prayers and desire them for Beverly and myself. And her surgery is tomorrow morning uh, for her right uh, knee replacement. So you pray about that. She's got to be in Boone at uh, 545. She obviously is the first one. So pray for her, Lord, to help and, and be with us in that. Maybe there's other things to be prayed about this morning. Let's pray and ask the Lord to help us. Brother Michael, how about praying for us this morning? Welcome you to Bethany. It's certainly good to be in the Lord's house this morning. And uh, I want to mention uh, uh, something here. If, if uh, y'all put that on the screen, the, the, uh, our paper's back here at the back. And uh, this is called Pastor Elmore's Verse Matching Game. I don't know how that all come about, but uh, anyway, it is matching. And there's, uh, there's a, a paper that's got that same information on it. Well, there's several back there, and I'd like for everybody to get one. Everybody have your own. And uh, at the end of the service, don't forget it. Pick you up one. And it's just kind of a, 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 a refresher somewhat, just kind of helping keep our, our thinking. And, I, and uh, the, the purpose is 
see kind of test our knowledge a little bit. So to start with, just see uh, how many you can match without looking them up, and then of course you can look them up. But once you get started and know maybe some of the more familiar ones, and perhaps you'll just get every one right off. But uh, it begins that as you, as you match several of them, then it gets the process of elimination, gets easier. So, uh, but anyway, just a reminder, I've found this out in studying that uh, if you don't keep refreshing and uh, things that you have once learned and maybe remembered, you'll forget. And uh, so it's good just to keep doing that. Uh, my aunt, uh, in talking to her on the phone, she'll, she finds comfort in, and it's a wonderful verse, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. That was a verse we had in our uh, Bible school memory verse some years back. But uh, she'll quote that to me on the phone. <laughs> and that just, uh, that's a blessing, isn't it? Thank God for the Word of God. And our memory verse for this week is uh, Psalms chapter 146 and verse 5. And our uh, assignment is to read Psalms 146, the chapter, short chapter, but verse 5. And verse 5 says, Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Happy is he that has the God of Jacob for his help. And I've been rattling that around in my mind. Praise God. You and I there say, we got the God of Jacob. And I got to thinking about what the God of Jacob done. He done a lot of things, didn't he? Just start reading the Old Testament. He done a lot of things for Jacob. And uh, happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose trust, uh, whose hope, is in the Lord his God. So Psalms 146 verse 5, our memory verse, and then read the chapter. And don't forget, uh, get one of these when you're going out at the end of the service. So it's just good to be in the Lord's house, isn't it? Amen. And our children's church. I'm going to get Brian to come this morning. Uh, you looking young this morning. How you feeling? Good to see you this morning. Good to be back up here one more time. JP, I've been missing this, ain't you? Opening up Sunday school and such. But uh, welcome to God's house this morning. Book of Psalms this morning. Preacher, I, I've got something to say to your question there. Why get saved this morning? The Lord does here. In uh, Psalm 73, verse 25, the Bible says, Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides thee. The uh, little girl got out the country, first time she'd ever been out the country. When you're in the city, Pete, is this thing rattling? Is this my ear? I need to cut one of these off. Okay. A uh, little girl went out the country first time she'd ever been out the country. She'd been in the city. So in the city, you know, you got lights, right? You can't see the sky very good in the, in the city. So, but when you get out the country, and, you know, get around here, we all see it. We go outside, we look up, and we see that stars, right? We see the heavens opened up before us. You know, the sky's just crisp and clear. It's just really, really, really beautiful, isn't it? Well, she looks up and she says, Oh, Mama, she said, If heaven is so beautiful on the wrong side, what must it look like on the right side? How about that? She's thinking the wrong side of heaven looks that good. How much beautiful, more beautiful would heaven look on the right side? I've seen some beautiful things in my life. Man, I've seen some night skies we just talked about. I've seen fall, you know, when the leaves turn. You've seen that, right? I've seen when the spring, when the leaves start to bud, that's a beautiful sight to me. The frost hits the first time. It's a pretty thing, a frost of the pumpkins, right? I've seen, you know, the snow when it covers and blankets and seems like the entire world. That's a beautiful sight. I've seen uh, you know, waterfalls. As I've seen raindrops. I've seen some really beautiful stuff. Danny, I've even seen a beautiful 1949 Ford truck. Amen, right? Yes, sir. I've seen some beautiful things. I've seen my children born. <laughs> Mikey looked like some kind of Sasquatch, but it's still a beautiful thing when kids are born, right? I've seen my beautiful wife. I've seen some real pretty things on this earth. But I'm on the wrong side of heaven right now, you see. 
I'm not on the right side. Well, when we think about heaven this morning, let's think about what it, what heaven this morning. We're seeing streets of gold. We're seeing walls of jasper, gates of pearl. You know, the beauty of it that is heaven. We're seeing no more pain, no more death, no more sorrow. That's in heaven this morning. We're seeing our loved ones that are in heaven this morning. And all that's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's a beautiful thing to think about. But let me tell you, he said, David said, Whom have I in heaven but thee? One person, one person only in heaven this morning is why it's worth it all. And his name's Jesus Christ. He saved my soul that I might be on the right side of heaven. That's why we get saved, preacher. It's him this morning. It's Jesus. He laid down his life on Calvary for us. Listen, the simplicity. I, I, I thought about Andy Taylor. Oh, Andy Taylor. You know, you know Andy. Oh, Andy, back in the 60s, he's on television, right? TV's going to mimic sometimes society. Do you agree with me? Okay. I mean, it's nasty on TV right now, so he'd be nasty out here in the world. You agree with me? Okay. 60s, I don't know how the 60s were. I wasn't born until 69. But apparently, Andy and them was longing for the days of old. They wanted the old simple things back in them times. Many a show he done, of they thought about the old times. So apparently, we're all longing for the old times. Well, I realize the world's changed. Right? Well, the world's changed. So what? God hasn't changed. It's what I'm trying to say this morning. The simplicity of the whole thing is this. Lord, bless your parents that you be uh, born and conceived. And we were born. We're living on this earth. Right? Pretty simple. Pretty simple. Make it hard. We make it all this stuff going on, but it's pretty simple. We, the simplicity of coming to church, the simplicity of hearing the word of God, the simplicity of Jesus Christ saving your soul. It's simple today. That's simple today. And knowing then we can live a life pleasing to Him and go forth to the heaven that we're talking about this morning. That's pretty simple. So there won't be a pandemic over in heaven. I promise you that. Amen. So even though times have changed, God hadn't. And the simplicity of what I'm saying... Do you think people are longing today for simplicity again? You know what I'm saying this morning? I want it, I long for time. We can roll in here to Bethany Baptist Church and won't worry about the disease and worry about all this going on here. We can just come to church to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I long for that time. Maybe we won't get it down here. I don't know. But I'll get it one day because I'll be on the right side of heaven. Hey, how about that? Simple times. Simple times. Who have I in heaven but thee? In his name, Jesus, this morning. Right, preacher? Amen. Amen. I ain't got Dylan to ask, that's right, so I ask you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> uh, well, you the kids this morning, you got a prayer request? <laughs> Amen. And Bible school, because I'm telling you, we're going to have it again one of these days. We won't have it one of these days. I always pray for old Chess, too. Y'all remember him. He's hurting. He got he busted himself up good. I can tell you that right now, but just pray for him. All right, anybody want to pray this morning? Oh, just like the rest of me is. <laughs> John Murrow, how about praying for his week? Let's uh, stand and sing together hymn number 359. Hymn 359.
look at Hebrews chapter 2 this morning. Just want to read one verse there and then I look for our, some thoughts this morning in the message. And I trust the Lord will help. Again, it's certainly good to see you and it's good to be in the Lord's house. Uh, look at Hebrews chapter 2 verse 3. And uh, appreciate uh, each one here this morning. I was, I was thinking, I mentioned about uh, trying to remember, uh, and I've been trying to remember our memory verses. We've had, got about five now accumulated, I think. And you might uh, look back and work on those. I, and I was reminded, I was in a service uh, one uh, uh, day, and uh, the preacher's preaching there, uh, he attended our church for a little while and uh, just uh, a, a wonderful preacher. In fact, he had, a, uh, he had an earned doctor degree in, uh, in the scripture and a very learned man. But that particular uh, service, uh, he came by me and he was going to use, just maybe to quote it or mention it in his sermon, uh, where it talks about uh, that God has, uh, I believe, esteemed his word above his own name. And uh, our uh, tech, not technician back there, see if you can find that if it's Psalm 138, I believe. But anyway, he, he said, the uh, preacher said, I committed that to memory a long time ago, and I can't think where it's at right now. Uh, and that's what the mind does, isn't it? So just have to keep working on them. And I've been trying to work on our other memory verses. Our one this morning, I get excited about that. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help. And whose hope is in the Lord his God. Amen. And then uh, Colossians 1.13, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. And Hebrews 9.27, and it has appointed a man once to die, but after this the judgment. And John 5.24, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but pass from death unto life. Amen. I'm glad for that. Jeremiah 32, verse 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth with thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Praise the Lord. Now, next week, I might not know one of them, but God's good, ain't he? The Scripture. You say, what does the Scripture do for you? Well, according to the book of Romans, you find comfort in the Scripture. Amen? And I'm already rejoicing in our Scripture shared in our children's church. church. You know, it's always a good positive part of the service, amen, and I was thinking about the sermon, why to get saved, and already I don't need an introduction because the children's church has introduced the sermon this morning, but to be with Jesus, amen, amen, why get saved, and I'll look at some things this morning, and trust the Lord will help us, we're in the book of Hebrews, chapter 2 and verse 3, and it said, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed in us by them that heard him. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, thank you. Privilege to approach the throne of grace. And I pray, Lord, you just help us this morning in the, in the message and may it go forth. Each, each heart that will hear, each receptive ear to hear and receptive heart to, uh, to let it resonate in, in their heart. And I pray, Lord, especially maybe, and I was thinking, and it's on my heart and in my prayer, Lord, that as it goes out through the video, uh, there may be someone or more than one that could hear that's not saved and they would be uh, come to an understanding of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, the conviction of sin and, and a reception of the Lord, believing on Him for salvation, believe the gospel, that Christ died for their sins according to the Scripture, and that He was buried, and thank God He rose again the third day according to the Scripture. Pray You'd help, bring to mind and heart the things You'd be pleased with, Lord, and we'll thank You and just praise You in Christ's name. Amen. Again, we appreciate You being here in the service. I need to add this also about our uh, matching. Uh, did you find Psalms 138? Uh, our matching... Uh, uh, papers back here. I need to thank uh, Petey and Janet for putting that together and you can commend them and you know where they had to start from was my writing on a piece of paper. 
and they deciphered it and typed it and printed it and made copies and the whole thing. Uh, it, does that say in the other verses about the, uh, esteeming his word above his own name? Yeah, magnified thy word above his own name. That's what I was looking for. These fellows found it. Okay, there it is. Psalms 138 verse 2. As I said, my preacher friend said, I committed that to memory many years ago. And he said, preacher, you know where it's at? He's trying to think of it. So there it is. He had magnified his word above his own name. I want to look this morning. I'm thinking about why I get saved. And in the sermon this morning is a little unusual in my notes. I've got two other sermons. And sometimes when I find something in study and uh, I'll write it down and then uh, praying and desiring the Lord to help me and maybe that'll be what the Lord will take me back to to study more and try to get into it. So I've got two outlines other than the one that I've got this morning and uh, in my notes here. I'm not using those, but maybe some other time. But anyway, the sermon this morning is such a blessing. One morning this week, and I can't even, now you can talk about my memory. I don't remember which morning it was. That's a whole lot about the memory, isn't it? And, but I woke up and I had this sermon, the, the, the outline on my heart. And it was just coming to me. And so I went to, and got my paper, my pen, and started writing and, uh, as it came to me. And that's how the sermon came that I'm trying to preach this morning. And I'll look at it. I want to mention here, I'm trying to preach on why I get saved. And if you'll go ahead with my outline, I may use the other things I've written down uh, later. But I want to think this morning about why I get saved. I was thinking about uh, the situation we are in and where it's, it's just so prevalent in our thinking of uh, the pandemic. That's one thing for sure. And then the situation in, in, uh, of our country. And I'm sure that every Christian, uh, it's a burden on their heart. Every patriot, American, it's a burden on their heart to think and uh, much prayer to be prayed. I'm going to feel uh, better about voting this year than I ever have, I believe, in my life. Uh, some of our uh, kin people already called me on the phone and uh, said, I voted. And they're so happy, they're excited, said, I voted. And uh, I've had a couple do that already. Uh, uh, well, there's four, four different ones that had mentioned and said, we voted, you know. We're so excited about voting and, uh, but let's pray much about that and what presses on my mind and maybe many people's mind. I'm going to get in the sermon here in a minute. But I was thinking in, about our, our country, the situation, and uh, the choice this time and the circumstance that we're in could not, could not be more different. And it could change the very, the very foundation of our government as such. And we could be in an entirely different form of government this is a serious business. I thank God for the freedom we enjoy, don't you? And I don't want a socialistic government myself. And I don't think, and I trust it'll ever happen. But if it did and somebody votes for it, they're not going to be happy with it after it's all over, said and done. You can be sure of that. It's never worked anywhere it's ever been tried. So I want to look this morning back to my sermon. But I was thinking about that, and that weighs heavy on my mind. I'm praying daily, and I believe you're doing the same thing. I'm praying a lot more than just one time a day. And uh, many times, just get down on my knees. I, you don't have to be on your knees to pray, do you? You can ride down the road and pray. Just keep your eyes open for sure, but you ride down the road and pray. And, uh, uh, and call on the Lord and ask Him to help. He can hear from heaven. I believe that, don't you? Just riding down the road. We can enter the, the throne room of heaven and pray. And many times throughout the day, I'm glad that we have, and we, the Hope Ministry has emphasized their praying uh, daily. And, and encourage our churches through the Baptist Association, uh, Russian Mountain Association every, to pray and involves a lot of people praying. But I'm praying throughout the day and no doubt you are the same thing that God will have mercy on our country. Amen. We can continue enjoying uh, what we know as a foundation. And I like last Sunday, I was thinking, and I mentioned that I believe to Beverly about in our children's church it was mentioned that our constitution was based on the Word of God. Isn't that something to think about? It never would have stood and been where it sat up until now had that not been. 
I've read and you've read the same thing where the Continental Congress, they would, they would stop in times of trying to formulate and get, get the, the Constitution together and so forth and go to the Lord in prayer. I believe Benjamin Franklin called them to prayer, those that were working on that. That's a good thought, isn't it? We're in, the, in our message this morning. But that's a big burden on my heart. But I was thinking, and so it is others, but I was thinking above and beyond all of that this morning, I want to try to preach a message on why I get saved. And I was thinking all that's going on and all that is, uh, it doesn't, it, it pales uh, in, in, uh, to, to be compared whenever we think about the importance why I get saved. Why I get saved. Because getting saved or not getting saved uh, makes all the difference for eternity. And we're going to be in eternity a whole lot longer than we've ever be here. And I'll try to preach on why I get saved. This is a message that came to me one morning early and I just wrote it down and then I had the same points that I'm trying to preach this morning and I thought about why I get saved. Number one, because of the penalty of sin. Because there's a need to get saved. As we go back and think in the very beginning and, you, and, and this I'm just preaching as we say to the choir and all of y'all know this very familiar. It won't hurt to hear it again and I trust somebody will hear it that is not saved and trust the Lord. The penalty of sin, the wages of sin is death. In the very beginning when God created man, Adam and Eve, placed them in the garden and he gave them instructions and he told them that there was a tree in the midst of the garden that you shall not eat of. And he said, whenever you do the day, if you eat of that tree, thou shalt surely die. And we see that's what happened. Not only spirit as physical death, we, they didn't die that particular day that, uh, that they committed the sin, but later they did die physically. But they died spiritually. And the Bible describes that in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and said that we're dead in trespasses and sins. They were separated from the fellowship of God. It was broken. They had this, the sin nature then was passed down to every one of us that's ever been born and that is here this morning in the whole world. Everybody that's ever been born... Uh, that sin nature passed down. Book of Romans 5.12 For sin, entered by one man sin entered into the world and death by sin. And death passed upon all men. Why? Because all have sinned. So we see the penalty of sin. Men are lost. Men, women, boys and girls born into this world with a sinful nature. Lost and undone without God. The book of John chapter 3 when Jesus talking to Nicodemus about being born again. And he said that that's born to the flesh is flesh. And that that's born of the Spirit is spirit. And that that's born of the flesh is flesh with a sinful nature. And there's no way that that sinful nature can ever be changed on our own merits and our own efforts. We can't do it ourselves. But thank God, my next point, the plan that is provided. I'm glad, thank God, God looked down from heaven. And you say, what about the plan that God provided, preacher? Was that something he thought of after man had sinned? No, no. You know the cross of Calvary wasn't just an afterthought with God. In the book of Revelation it said that we see the Lamb slain as it were before the foundation of the world. The Lord Jesus Christ, the plan that God provided. You know the verse that I remembered and memorized very early in in Sunday school. We used to have, our Sunday school teacher would teach us verses to remember. I was growing up in Sunday school. I thank God for that, amen. Amen. My dad would read the Bible to us, Bible stories, when we were kids every night of our life. What a blessing that was. After he had worked sometimes maybe a 10-hour shift at the factory where it was hot in the, winter, in the summertime and cold in the winter. And you know, the, the, the work circumstances wasn't too conducive for uh, feeling good back in those days, amen. And a hard, a hard life to do that. But he taught us the scripture. And the word of God, he emphasized that in my growing up years, how important it was. It's still important. And it gets more important to me every day that I live. Happy is the man that have the God of Jacob for his help. Praise God this morning. So we see the plan was provided. John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I'm glad for that, aren't you? She should not perish. You say, what about the penalty of sin? Man was perishing. Man was lost without God. But I'm glad he sent Jesus, aren't you? He made the plan. That, and, and this plan, I got to thinking about this plan. This plan is a whosoever will plan. I like that, don't you? In the book of Peter, it said that it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 
You say, what's the will of God? Well, one of the very number one things, the will of God, is that everybody get in. He wants everybody to get saved, amen. So we see the plan that is provided. I'm glad he provided a plan for us, aren't you? We used to sing a song sometime. I'm satisfied with God's redemption plan. I'm satisfied it is sufficient for all men. And then it goes on in that song and asks the question, I wonder if the Lord's satisfied with me. That puts it back on us. But I'm glad the plan that is provided and then the price that was paid. We emphasize the fact, and we should, that salvation is the gift of God. That it's free. Isn't that a blessing? It's free. Isn't it a blessing to receive a gift, you know, that's given, and uh, the person giving the gift, you know, sometimes we give gifts, we, we exchange gifts, that's what we call it, we exchange gifts. And you know, you know, ask one another what you want for Christmas. And sometimes, if you're not careful, your wife will just tell you right out what she wants for Christmas. You better get to working on it sometime about August or whatever you need to do. One time, a former pastor, I got up there, and I don't know why I done that. I told him what I wanted for Christmas, <laughs> what I wanted the church to buy me. <laughs> and uh, it was a set of Clarence Larkin's books. <laughs> I might just tell you what it was. And uh, so one of the older fellows in the church, he said, Preacher, it's a little unusual. said, we've never had a pastor before tell us what he wanted for Christmas. And I said, well, get used to it, you know. But anyway, we just, we joked a little bit, but you said, what happened? Praise God, I've got to say it. <laughs> they had to go all the way to Greensboro to find it, but they got it for me, and I appreciated that. But it's a blessing. They give me that set of commentaries or, or books, I might say, not commentaries, but books as such. And he wrote the, Clerce Larkin was the one that wrote the greatest book on dispensational truth. He saw some things dispensationally that most, a lot of the writing about dispensation is just Clerce Larkin warmed over. I've read several people about dispensation. Some picked up some new things. But he used to, the Lord would wake him up and he'd get up and begin to write. He'd, he'd fixed a lot of uh, graphs and other things uh, about the dispensations and some things. But that gift was given to me. I thought about that. And you know, it was freely given and I didn't owe a thing back. Isn't that a blessing? Thank God for a free gift. A free gift. It is the gift of God. But we need to think this morning, although salvation is free to you and I, it costs God, His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And it cost the Lord Jesus Christ His blood that was shed on Calvary. Book of 1 Peter, we're not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but thank God by the precious blood as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. You and I wouldn't be on the other, on headed to the other side of heaven. I love that. I love that illustration. To see the other side of heaven had it not been for the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God for the price that was paid. And then my next thought is the power that is available. Book of John 1, 12. To as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. Romans 1, 16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, Paul said, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The power of God. We sing the song and I love that. There's power in the blood. There's wonderful working power in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. It took the power of God to birth you and I into the family of God and make us the sons of God. It took God's miraculous power, thank God. It took His power, His, His great power. Our verse in Jeremiah said, through His great power and His stretched out arm that He created heaven and earth, the power of God. I'm glad for the power that is available, aren't you? Whenever we believe and put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, then He births us into the family of God. Through the power that is available, there's power in the blood. I'm glad for that, aren't you? Heard an old preacher once, and sometimes you get different questions asked to you, and somebody asked him the question. He's preaching on the blood of Christ. Cleanses from sin, Revelation 1.5, who has washed us from our sins in His own blood. And the unbeliever said, Preacher, I'd like for you to explain to me how that blood cleanses sin. And the preacher said, well, let me ask you a question. How does water quench thirst? 
And the unbeliever said, well, I don't know. And he said, I don't know either, but I just know it does. I don't know how water quenches thirst, do you? But we know that it does. I remember as a kid, Daddy used to work was one of Daddy's principles of life. My dad, not only reading the Bible, but he worked us. And I thought if I could ever grow up and get big enough to get out on my own, I'm going to get me some rest when I get away from here. I mean, we worked. That was just it. Work, Brother F.C., work. That's what my daddy believed in. He said if you work and if you stay busy, you won't get in trouble. And that philosophy worked pretty good. You were too tired to get in trouble. You didn't want to get in no meanings after he had worked you. But I remember working and, uh, under the leadership of my dad. And we'd come in the house and we're so thirsty, you know. And we'd run. Mom would have that ice water ready for us. And boy, as a kid, you know, you'd grab that and just start drinking, gulping it down. Mom would say, hold it, hold it. Don't drink that too fast, you know. You slow down a little bit. You said, what was that water doing? His quenching that thirst that we had. Thank God for the blood of Christ that cleanses from sin. And I'm glad that it does, aren't you? The price that was paid and the power that is available and then the peace that was promised. Romans 5, 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad we have peace this morning, aren't you? Through the Lord Jesus Christ, He's promised peace. He told His disciples in John 14, 27, Peace I give unto you, not as the world give, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. The peace of God. Book of Philippians, peace that passes of all understanding. I'm glad we have peace this morning. Why well, get saved? Thank God to enjoy the peace of God. Amen. What a blessing that is. Boy, that comes at times when we really need it, don't it? Amen. That peace of God. And all of us have been able to have that wonderful experience of praying and just have a satisfaction flood our soul. And we see God move. I've been praying about a big thing and I'm trusting and holding on to God and my faith has been up and down on it. I must admit this morning, wavering and back and forth, I thought about what Dr. Stanley said one time. He said he had a situation in his life and God told him one thing. But he said all the circumstances around him told him something else. And he said the Lord spoke to him and said, are you going to believe me or are you going to believe the circumstances around you? Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help. Hallelujah. Thank God this morning. I'm glad for the peace that is promised. And then get saved this morning because of the plea of the Savior. I'm glad that Jesus came, Luke 19, 10, to seek and save that which was lost. Book of Timothy said, This is a faithful saying, word of all acceptation. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, to seek and save that which was lost, the plea of the Savior. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Come unto me all yet labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Ain't that a blessing? Come. John 5, 40, Jesus said, You will not come that you might have life come unto me. And I love the verse in the book of Hebrew, uh, Revelation 3 and 20. And we've given that a lot of times, the invitation time, but it's still a precious verse. And just the thought of it, sometimes you see paintings of, of Jesus, of people that have depicted that in their mind, and they'll have Jesus at a door knocking. But he said that, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man will hear my voice, and if they'll open, I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. I'm glad for the pleadings of the Savior, aren't you? And I'm thinking as I'm trying to preach and been praying to that end. You know the videos, the wonderful thing about that, one of the things is that sometimes people just stumble on things. Amen. I was listening to that, uh, some music and so forth. You do the same thing, I guess. And so I saw it just come up there, to, you know, down the list, a preacher in a camp meeting. I said, well, that might be... So I pushed it, and, it, and man, he cranked off wide open. And he, he was like a helicopter. He wasn't like a plane, you know. Some preachers like a plane, you know. They go down the runway and just keep going. They need a long runway, try to get up, and sometimes they come to the end of the runway, and they ain't up yet. But boy, this helicopter preaching, I like that, don't you? They just start off. They just lift off, you know, man. They're up in the air before you know it, and he was like that. But you know, I was thinking about the video, and it may be that somebody just stumbled on it. I'm praying that that'll happen. And the Lord will speak to their heart and Jesus will plead with them. 
Isn't it a blessing? I grew up, as many of you did in church, and we'd sing that song, Jesus is calling, tenderly calling. Ain't that a sweet thought? That there's a God in heaven that made a plan and sent a Savior. And He came and announced it to the shepherds there as they were watching their sheep, over, watching over the flock by night. And He said, For in two years born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And thank God He came to this sin-cursed earth, walked on this earth, lived a sinless life, went to the cross of Calvary and paid for my sin debt, your sin debt. But I'm glad He didn't stop there. He's still pleading. And He came, spoke to me one day, amen. Isn't that a blessing about all the people that's in the world? Don't that stir your heart that He would come to just a remote place <laughs> down on 268 and speak to a little boy's heart about salvation, pleading. Maybe there are those and maybe some that are listing that he's pleaded several times and so he does through uh, with people and sometimes I'm thinking about an individual that came uh, here to our church Some ways back now, and the Holy Spirit of God moving on their heart. And they said, uh, I want to talk sometime later. I was praying for that individual just this week. I hope the Lord speaks. You know, sometimes the conviction comes on our heart and we fight it off, you know, and then we kind of get back with life. But I won't thank God that he can plead again. Don't you? And I pray and trust he'll do that. The Savior that is pleading. And then uh, our personal accountability. You know, there are those that deny that there is a God. In our society, you know, we've seen the animosity toward Christianity that's just unbelievable, isn't it? There are those that are so uh, defied about that and, and so... Uh, 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 with such an extreme uh, hatred it would be to think that anybody that professes to be a Christian could even hold a position anywhere in our country. There are those that detest that to no end. But I'm glad there's still some that love God. Amen. And that look to the Lord and recognize Him Many of them may not be saved, but they've got, a, they've got a, 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 a compassion and an understanding about religious freedom. I'm glad we've got an administration that's a friend to Israel. I thought about that. And I began to think about that verse this week in my prayer, Psalm 122, verse 6. They that love thee, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They that love thee shall prosper. I'm trusting God for that, aren't you? I'm glad for all the friendship that we've extended to Israel. You say, why is that a factor and why is that so big? Because that's in the Bible. Anything that's in the Bible is a big issue, amen. <laughs> Thank God this morning. Personal accountability. But the Bible says this, and I say this in all kindness, that the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Many would like to think and believe that their God doesn't exist. And therefore, if He doesn't exist, then I'm not accountable for myself. But the truth this morning is, God does exist. And everybody that's listening to me, and myself included, we will give an account to God. We are accountable. And then my last thought this morning, why get saved? Because of the place in eternity. I like our children's church again. He's talking about bringing things down just to simple thinking as to the facts. The fact this morning is there's only two places in eternity. And one of them is the one that was spoken about, heaven. And what a beautiful place heaven is going to be. You know, I thank God for the beauty of nature that God's allowed us to enjoy. Aren't you? In fact, when we get to heaven, we're going to praise God for creation. Amen. But heaven, oh, how beautiful heaven must be. 
But when we come down to the Bible and the Word of God, we see there's only two places for eternity. And one of them's heaven. And the other one is hell. Why get saved? Because of the place in eternity. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go and prepare a place for you. A place. And I'm going to come again to receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also a place. Thank God I'm glad there's a place, aren't you? And then on the other side this morning, why get saved? What's the urgency of getting saved? All the things that's happening that I've mentioned and that bears on our mind and there's a lot to be thinking about. I thank God for America has been the most generous nation on the face of the earth to help suffering humanity. Of the charities and all the things, America has that distinction. We've sent out the missionaries across the world. America. We came here for religious freedom, established our country. That's what it's all about. Thank God it's founded on biblical principles, America. I pray it may continue that way. May the Lord help us. Two places. Only two places. Heaven and hell. In the book of Luke chapter 16. And you know, there are places in the scripture that's difficult to read. I tried to preach one time from Luke 16 on when a family member dies and goes to hell. Sad thought, isn't it? We had an old preacher come to our church one time. I remember that many, many years ago. And he preached on one in hell and five more on the way. Where do we find that in the book of Luke chapter 16? Rich man in hell. And he was asking Father Abraham, he said, first of all, send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I'm tormented in this flame. And then he made another request of Abraham. And he said, send him, speaking of Lazarus, he said, send him to my father's house because I've got five brethren there that they would not come to this place of torment. Book of Revelation 20, 14 and 15. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Why get saved this morning? Because of the place in eternity. Everybody's listening to my voice and will view by the way of video. You'll either be in one of the two places. And here's the thing. And quite honestly, this is one of the things about hell that is, I might say, the most difficult to believe. You say, do you not believe it, preacher? I believe it, but it's hard for me to wrap my mind around it. That people in hell are there forever and ever. And if that be true, and the Bible teaches that, then the rich man, is, even as I'm speaking, he's still in hell this very day. Why get saved? Because of the place in eternity. Heaven. Well, I'm excited about heaven. Aren't you? Wonderful place. I'm thinking a lot of burdens and things in life. And I'm praying and thank each of you so sincerely for your prayers. And you're the same way I am. When it's your loved one, then it gets to the very heart, don't it? To the very heart. My sweet bride of 51 years. It's a blessing. I, we went for the pre-op and his two people complimented my wife's hair, how pretty it was. I told you the little story about telling the nurse that I wondered, I guess you wonder how I got her. And she said, you must be a fast, smooth talker. So she had on that little purple uh, sweater thing. And she's got some different colors on them. Purple, we love purple. 
And the anesthesiologist, he met with us, talked to us, and he said to her, he said, I love that purple top. And I bless him. <laughs> but where it gets right down here in the heart is that Monday morning, if time remains, then that sweet little bride of mine's going to go, and then they put you to sleep. So I want you to pray. I'm praying. And I'm waiting for the phone call, and I'm so anxious for the doctor to call and say, it's over. Everything went good. That's what we want to hear, ain't it? A lot of sorrows and burdens and things in, in life. But I want to thank God when it's all over. I'm headed... Thank God to the other side, right? I'm going to see what's on the other side. It's pretty pretty just looking in the sky, isn't it? But thank God over yonder. Happy is he who hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Let us stand for prayer. While we're standing this morning, heads bowed and eyes closed for a moment of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I want to thank you for helping this morning. A lot of emotions run in our thinking and in our hearts as human beings, and sometimes the pressures of life are heavy. But Lord, of all that being said, the most important thing for anyone, any individual that's ever lived, is to get saved, to get saved and know the Lord Jesus and spend eternity in heaven. And I would pray for that this morning. Maybe there'd be someone, or more than one perhaps, we would pray and desire that would hear the message. And we'll come to an understanding of knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior. Why get saved? A lot of reasons to get saved. But thank God it's pointed out in the introduction of the sermon that was in the children's church to be with Jesus one day. Jesus said, I pray for them that thou hast given me, that they may be where I am, that they may behold my glory. Lord, we're going to do that one day. Thank God. Lord, may you just help us. May you move on every heart. We thank you again. In Jesus' name, amen. morning and teaching in the Lord's house. Appreciate the selection of the song. Well, that followed up. I'm glad he's calling, aren't you? And it's wonderful that he continues to call. Is that a blessing? The long suffering of God. Appreciate you being here this morning and we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. Brother Armit, would you dismiss us?